Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at how we did matchmaking in the fish game project. So I've got the fish game project open here. And if I just run this in the editor, you'll be able to see that we have an option to specify our name. We also have an option to specify how many players we want in the match, two, three, or four. And then we have a find match button, just like we did in the previous simple example. If I press find match now, you're going to see that it's telling us that it is finding a match and we can also cancel the matchmaking request as well. So let's dive in to the code. We're going to open up our Nakama connection script here. And we're just going to take a look through this. Now, some of this you will already have seen in the previous video when we were doing our simple project, but I'm just going to run through how we're doing it in the production like Nakama connection script. So you can see here that we have a find match function, which is an asynchronous function like we had previously. And the only difference here is that we're accepting a minimum amount of players in the function. That just gives us a little bit more flexibility, but by no means is that something that you have to do. The next thing you can see here is that we have this matchmaking properties dictionary. So it's a dictionary of string values and it's a key value pair. So we have the key is engine and the value here is unity. Now, if you look through the comment here, you can see that I've said we set some matchmaking properties to ensure that we're only looking for games that are using the Unity client. And one thing to point out here is that this is not required when using the Unity Nakama SDK. The reason we are using this in Fish Game is that the Nakama server that we're using is being used by the Unity version of Fish Game, the Godot version, and the Rust version. And each of those versions has slightly different networking packet types and the messages that get passed between them are slightly differently and what we don't want is for the unity version of the game to connect to the server and start receiving messages from the godot version of the game so the reason we have this is simply just a way to differentiate between network and matchmaking requests for the unity engine client itself so with that being said we come down and we grab our matchmaking ticket again by calling socket.add matchmaker async you can see here that instead of the asterisk, which is sort of a wildcard filter, we actually pass in this plus properties.engine colon unity. Now, what that's saying is that we only want to match with a match in the matchmaking pool that has the properties engine unity. Okay, so that's what the plus means. And then we're also passing in our minimum players, we're passing it in for both the min and maximum players. Again, you saw that in the previous video, that just basically means that whatever you pass in for this minimum players, that's exactly how many players you're gonna wait to find in your match. And then we're passing in our matchmaking properties here, and that's just saying, add us to the pool, and by the way, I want you to add a property to this matchmaking ticket, which says we're running the Unity engine. Now again, this isn't something that's specific to the Nakama SDK. You can give any property key and any property value in here, and you can specify your own set of filters when using the Nakama SDK. I've just gone with engine and unity as my key and value. So then after that, you can see that we save a reference to the ticket exactly like we did in the previous video. And that's it for the find match function. The other thing that you can see down here is that we also have a cancel matchmaking function. And basically the only thing we do here is we call the sockets remove matchmaker async and we pass in a reference to our matchmaking ticket. And that will basically remove us from the matchmaking pool so that nobody else can match with us. So now we're gonna dive into the game manager here. So let's come over to the left and go to game manager. Now this script deals with quite a lot of different things. However, you can see in our start function, we're doing very similar things to what we did in the previous video in that we're connecting our socket events to a event handler function. And the one that we're interested in here is received matchmaker matched. And also we have a received match presence event as well. So let's come down and see what those do. In our on received matchmaker matched, what we do is we cache a reference to our local user. So you can see that we're using the match.self.presence, which we used previously. We're then joining the match by calling the join match async on the socket. And we're just passing in our I matchmaker matched object. We're doing a few things here around disabling and enabling various menus. We're playing our main audio theme. 
But the key one here is that we're then going through all of the presences in that match, so all of the other users that are connected, and we're spawning a player object for them. Now, I won't dive into the spawning function right here because that is going to come up in a future video. However, it's just to note that this is where you would want to spawn any users that are also connected in the match. We then cache a reference to this match so that we can use, for example, match.id later down the line. And then we also have this on received match presence event handler. Now, when this event handler is called, it's Nakama's way of telling us that, hey, either one or more people have either joined or left the match, and we can then handle that appropriately. So you can see in here that we're saying for every user in the match presence event joins array, we're going to spawn them a player in the match. So if someone joins the match midway through, we're going to spawn a player for them. And also for everyone that leaves the match, we're going to go and look up in our players array and we're going to destroy that character and remove them from the array. So anyone that leaves the match midway through, we're going to get rid of their player from the match. And anyone that joins midway through, we're going to spawn a character for them. So let's just take a quick look at that in action. Let's fire up our fish game here. Let's come over to build and run. Now this is going to take a little bit longer because obviously this is a slightly larger project. Okay, so you can see we have this open here. We're going to click find match. Let's come over to our Unity project here and press find match again. You can see it waits for a couple of seconds here. And then it drops us into a match. So let's just have a little hunt around and see if we can find the other player here just to make sure that the character has indeed been spawned. And we'll probably find his way up here. And there he is. He's over in the other side. Okay, cool. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to look at spawning players.